And one thing mathematicians in general just kind of love to do is classify things. And polynomials are no exception to that. There are two main ways that we classify polynomials. And in a sense, both of them are classifying them based on their size, right? So let's, let's look at the first one. First way we classify polynomials, the first way we think about the size of a polynomial, is by looking at the number of terms it has. And remember from our, our definitions in the previous lecture, the terms of a polynomial are the individual monomials that are being added together. Right, so that's actually where we start. A monomial is a polynomial with just a single term. So there are things like these two here. Uh, a binomial is a polynomial like these two that have two terms. Uh, a trinomial is a polynomial with three. And once we get past, I mean, we could keep going past three. You could say, you know, a, a tetranomial or a, or a quadrinomial. We usually stop at three, right? Anything greater than three, we just kind of generically refer to as a polynomial. And so that's our first way of, of classifying these things, defining the size in terms of, in a sense, how long it is, right? How many terms the polynomial has. A second way we do this uh, is what's called the degree of the polynomial. And the degree of a polynomial, we, we really start with monomials. Right, the degree of a monomial is just the sum of its exponents. So, for example, take a look at these things. 3x to the fifth, the degree of this one would be 5, because that's the only exponent. Right now, in this next one, there, there's two variables. Right? Two variables means two exponents. So the degree of 7x to the fourth y squared would be 4 plus 2, which is 6. All right, now 12x, this, is, this one is a little, a little different. It doesn't look like there's an exponent there, right? But there is, right? But there is. We don't usually write it, but you can think of there as being a one up there in the exponent spot. X to the first is just x. So the degree of this polynomial would be one. And that make the next, make, makes the next one down here, the exponent of the a is a one, the b is a one, the c is a five, and the degree is going to be 7. All right, and how about this last one here? There, there's no variable. And how can we talk about the exponent of a variable if there isn't one? Well, we can fudge it a little bit. Right? Remember, anything to the 0 power, almost anything to the 0 power, is 1. Right? So if I kind of quietly slip an x to the 0 in here, that's almost always 1. So it doesn't really change it. Right? So we're going to kind of politely ignore the exception. Zero to the zero power is undefined, right? That's, that's why I keep saying almost always. But we're, we're going to kind of politely ignore that and define the degree of a monomial that is just a constant to be zero. Okay, so how about the next level, right? How about if we're actually talking about polynomials? Well, the degree of a polynomial is equal to the greatest degree of its individual terms. So let's look at some examples again here. Right here, the degree of the first term is 5, the degree of the second term is 2, and the degree of the last term is 0, which means the degree of the polynomial itself is 5, it's the biggest exponent. For this next one, the individual degrees, the first one is 6, that's 4 plus 2, 7x cubed is 3, and 5xy, we're going to add the two kind of implicit ones, and this will be 2. So the degree of the polynomial is the biggest of those three numbers. That's 6. All right, so here, 12x plus 2. The degree of the first monomial, first term, is 1. Second term is 0, so the overall degree is 1. And then what do we have here? This is 7, 5, and 12. So the degree of this last polynomial will be 12. Okay, so now we've got a whole bunch of definitions. We've got monomials, we've got polynomials, uh, terms, coefficients, all sorts of stuff. Uh, don't necessarily worry about memorizing them all right up front. These are things are terms that I'm going to be using a lot. Uh, your teacher or professor will be using a lot. So you'll get a lot of reinforcement just by hearing them. Okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to kind of take the next step. We're going to start thinking about how we can do different arithmetic operations with these polynomials. For example, how do we add them? How do we multiply them? How do we divide them? Right? So that's where we're going to go in the whole uh, next sequence.